simultaneous large-scale disorder across many different areas of the capital, which meant that Wandsworth police were drafted to help elsewhere, and also that when things kicked off here, we were competing for resources with other areas of London. One of the things I learnt during that week uh, was uh, the critical importance of having officers who are publicly trained, public order trained, um, something that's already been mentioned and that the consensus uh, motion rightly draws attention to. Uh, and going forward, I would like to know what is being done to ensure that there is a proper assessment of how many public order trained officers Wandsworth requires uh, and to ensure that these are indeed available. But I think it would be quite wrong to reduce this debate purely to the number of public order trained police. During the course of the riots, other officers also played a critical role, notably the safer neighbourhood teams, who were vital in liaising with the community and providing reassurance and visible policing across the borough. So the issue of overall police numbers does in fact matter. We do need visible policing on our streets to make us feel safe and to help tackle crime. And indeed it is the apparent absence of police when the disorder in Clapham Junction happened that has been one of the principal complaints voiced by residents. <coughs> Today, I received an email setting out how the loss of 10 sergeants in Wandsworth is going to affect the borough's SNTs. We know, too, that we can expect further cuts in police numbers next year. Uh, the members opposite uh, can try all they like to prove that the number of police is going up, uh, but we and the public aren't fooled. The truth is that since 2010, the trend has been down, and this is projected to continue. The, the consensus statement of support tonight for a relook at the issue of police numbers uh, is welcome. But what counts, and what I think the electorate will look at, is hard results. Uh, two months ago, Boris Johnson declared his conviction uh, that the police cuts in London were a mistake and that something needs to be done. Uh, one might say it was something of a miraculous conver uh, conversion. It's time for him and uh, his Conservative colleagues across the chamber to deliver on that statement. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor McDonnell. <coughs> Madam Mayor, I'm delighted that Mayor Boris Johnson has undertaken to increase police numbers in London to a predicted 32,510 by May 2012. But despite fiscal constraints, he's injecting an extra 42 million pounds into the police budget. He saved an estimated 100 million pounds previously wasted by Ken Livingstone on expensive and unnecessary infrastructure. His initiative to increase single patrolling by 50% has raised considerably the uniform police profile on the streets. And I'm relieved to note that recruiting has now been resumed. Even if this, even if this does mean, even if this does mean Councillor Belton. We are indeed reverting to type. No one has said that we introduced SNT. As I was trying to say, Madam Mayor, and I'll try and say again, and I hope it doesn't go against my five minutes. You have an extra 20 seconds Thank for that, Councillor MacDonald. I am delighted that this Mayor has reintroduced recruitment, even if this does mean that one of the best PCSOs in my own ward will be leaving us shortly to join mainstream policing. It must never be forgotten that new recruits, even former PCSOs, are just that, new recruits. On the night of the Clapham Junction riots, nearly 6% of the police available to the acting borough commander were probationers, too inexperienced for public order, order duties of any kind. If new officers are to be used to their maximum uh, potential, they must be trained quickly. There is no substitute for their first solo patrol. As with any uniform service, their training requires the presence of experienced seniors and peers on the ground. It's imperative, therefore, that new officers are able to work closely with an adequate number of seasoned peers, largely sergeants. Referring to SNTs, Last time I looked, 20 less 5 made 15. <laughs> 10. Thomas. As Councillor Cook has said, until recently, too many of these sergeants, these crucial middle managers, were tied down with the SNT teams. Certainly, many SNTs required 
and still do require a dedicated sergeant. But equally many did not and do not. I have no difficulty that my own ward of East Putney, according to MSP MPS figures, the second safest in Wandsworth, is now sharing a sergeant with West Hill, according to the MPS, the safest. The two teams have not been merged, but remain separate entities, sharing only a sergeant. The other sergeant, Helen Wood, has not been forced to leave Wandsworth, as the Labour Party rumour control would suggest. She has, in fact, been promoted to acting inspector, and she's now heading <coughs> the Putney sector, Jim's old job. Well done, Helen. <coughs> there can be little doubt that policing numbers in the various London boroughs do not reflect their crime potential. Some years ago, the then Labour-controlled MPS entered into a highly complex scheme known as the Resource Allocation Forma formula, notionally to allocate officer numbers according to need. I was one of the ones with participants on the scheme. I needn't have bothered. The volatile nature of certain boroughs such as Croydon was initially factored in, but was subsequently ignored when it's found that the formula findings, were they to be followed, would have caused Labour-held boroughs such as Lombard, Lambeth to hemorrhage on police numbers. Transfers were all but forgotten and the polit politically unpalatable findings of the RAF ignored. Is it any wonder that boroughs today are skewered and when disorder broke out in boroughs such as Croydon with a critical lack of local resources, they found them themselves quickly overwhelmed and having to call upon others, <coughs> including Wandsworth. The riots of early August were completely unlike any other. In Northern Ireland, Bristol, Toxtis, elsewhere, elsewhere, the rioters stood their ground. In London, they were completely fluid. What was needed at the very least to protect vulnerable people and property were large numbers of shield or public order trained officers. Their numbers proved to be wholly inadequate. The result that shield trained availability was quickly moved from one part of London to another. Clapham Junction lost out. I have no idea why the MPS in the past has neglected public order or shield training, other than the fact it's deeply unpopular with the police. I've observed a riot and shield training at the MPS training centre at Gravesham. It requires a high level of fitness, it's arduous, potentially dangerous, and occasionally painful. It is only for the most committed. Unlike firearm specialist units, royalty and diplomatic protection, the SPG, Public order officers are not dedicated to that role. They are drawn from men and women undertaking conventional duties in each borough to which they return after training. Shield training is simply an extra string to a PC's bow. Please could you wind up now, Councillor yeah. McDonnell. Thank I you. understand on the night of Clapham Junction riots, Wandsworth had no more than 19% of its officers shield trained. It had only 60 officers available to defend the borough, of whom only 8 or 13% were public order trained. Wandsworth has supplied a further 52 officers off borough that day, of whom 32 had been public order trained. Only that night was this loss enhanced by 25 trained officers from elsewhere. Thank you, Donald, I'm going to ask you to wind after up. After a decade of neglect, this patent weakness is now being addressed. Hopefully this will leave the police far better equipped to combat and keep localised any future disturbances. The MPS under Boris Johnson has not got Sorry, Councillor MacDonald, I'm going to have to ask you to sit down. You've really overrun your doing, time. And I commend you, Mr. Thank you. Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. I have two different images of the police over the summer. Uh, one image of the police in riot shields walking behind a black painted armoured car through Clapham Junction. Another, the police at street parties and police at school fates in uh, my ward in Tooting. And I think that difference between hard and soft policing is a very important distinction to make. And I think it's the soft policing that we would rather that the police were doing than the hard policing. But nevertheless, those police who did step up to the mark uh, are to be commended for their courage. SNTs, for me, are actually this key link with the community, the bit that gives us the soft policing. But it's not just about policing, I think. Part of the amendment we look at calls on other agencies uh, to work 
to repair the damage of the riots, the social damage. I don't want to emphasize or overemphasize the role of young people in the riots, nor indeed do I agree with somebody like Boris Johnson who turned up in Clapham Junction to say that there was no social basis to these riots at all. If we think about this statement by a, a woolly liberal, I don't know if I can put a number on it. It might be 100,000 deeply broken and troubled families. I think this is a real project for this parliament in saying, right, we know who they are, we know where they are, we know how we can help strengthen a family. So let's roll up our sleeves and not be embarrassed about helping out. That, of course, is David Cameron speaking in response to the riots. And yet, as David Cameron speaks about us helping these 100,000 families, and we, it's not just the Conservative Party which has aimed to do this. Labour brought in Think Family as part of its policies to try and deal with these families in difficulty. We also have, in Wandsworth, four posts being lost in our family support department. Two posts for parental involvement and two posts to help uh, men who perhaps haven't engaged properly with their families or have provided very poor role models to their families. Those posts are going. So we have, on the one hand, David Cameron talking about what he would like to happen, and on the other hand, the financial consequences of his decisions, which filter down to councils like ours. We also have two other different points of view. We have Boris Johnson talking immediately after the riots about the need to look again to reverse these police cuts. But then, on the 31st of August, we have the Mayor, Boris Johnson, sending out some reports from crime and community safety road shows in which Kit Malthouse says the following. Safer neighbourhood policing is a major success. However, he is determined to go ahead with the cuts, which will mean a reduction of between four and six safer neighbourhood sergeants in every borough. What we are getting is Tory party in confusion. It appears they will say anything, and they contradict each other. They say the right things at one level, but actually their actions at others financially are undermining the PR spin that somebody like David Cameron, who of course came out of the PR industry, has been carefully constructed to make the public believe that it's a very different sort of Tory party. But actually, one of the things that really encouraged me about Wandsworth Council is that tomorrow, when we go to the uh, Education and Young People's Services Committee, we have a very measured, interesting document about Wandsworth young people who are involved in these riots and disturbances. Um, it doesn't leak to any conclusions. It states the situation. The fact is that after all the arguments about general police numbers, Wandsworth will be short by five police officers. The SNTs are our link with the community. And they're the face of a police force that gives hope for a rather different relationship between young people and the police. The fires may be doused, but I don't feel, I fear that we're out of the woods yet. Now is not the time for police cuts in Wandsworth. Thank you, Councillor Gibbons, for sticking to the five minutes. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thank Councillor you. Maxwell Scott. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm, I'm fascinated by the claim of uh, Tory confusion from the benches opposite. I'm not quite sure how many motions we're debating tonight, how many amendments. I think probably the most honest and hardest thing I can say of the party opposite is to suggest that Terry Thomas might have called them an absolute shower. Um, I think we are, in fact, debating three minority party motions uh, tonight, and the first and second themes are rather different. I suspect they are an uh, attempt at a trick, much loved by Alistair Campbell, called triangulation. Um, this has also been described as the third way, a theory invented by another lefty with violent tendencies like Bad Al. I'm talking, of course, about Benito Mussolini. In political terms, triangulation is when you take a little bit from the left, a little bit from the right, and try and rise up through the middle 
uh, sort of self-appointed messianic figure like an Obama or an Amuna. I think the motion on the police is a minority party's special guest star from the right. So perhaps it's hearts in the right place. Now, like everyone here, I want adequate police numbers, but we need to define what adequate means. Otherwise, it's just a debate about the numbers, a rather narrow focus on inputs, not on outcomes. From 01 to 010, we saw police spending rise by 25% in real terms. And before, before you suggest this is some sort of accusation about Gordon Brown's incredible fiscal incontinence, we saw almost as large increases during the 1980s. As a result of all these increases, last year we spent around £15 billion on policing. That's amongst the most per head in the developed world. The question is, why didn't this stop the looting? And why, even before that fateful night in August, didn't people feel safe on our streets and in their properties? Now, a lot of this is perception. There's a perception you never see a policeman when you need one. And I'm afraid this perception was a reality, at least for part of the night on August the 8th. And yet a lot of that extra money over the years was spent on the one thing that some people suggest matters more than anything else, which is headcount. And yet earlier this year, the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police said there's been, and I quote, a political obsession with the number of police officers. We've kept that number artificially high. We had large numbers of police officers doing admin jobs. What a shame. Last year, 14,500 police officers made no arrests at all. It's no great surprise. It's difficult to feel anyone's collar when you're trapped behind a desk, even when your training costs £80,000. The point I want to make about this is as follows. Yes, we want everything to be done to ensure that events like those of August the 8th never happen again. But we know this isn't just a question of numbers. It's about how you manage them. It's about looking for opportunities to do things more effectively with civilian staff, rather than using expensive warranted officers. It's about better and smarter use of new technologies and social networks. It's about strengthening community ties. It's about testing and retesting crisis plans. It's about making sure officers have the right equipment and training. It's about reforming health and safety so common sense holds sway. And it's about making sure that officers are liberated from filing duty and can be on frontline duty. Then we'll get the outcomes that we want and need. Crime prevention, safer streets, reassured residents, and I believe, more fulfilled policemen and women. Because while we admire and respect their enormous personal bravery, we must also abhor any institutional inefficiency that holds them back from doing their job, the job they were trained to do, and the job that taxpayers pay them to do. Now, policing isn't the only area of public policy where a focus on inputs hobbles the debate. It's the same when more hospital beds are seen as a proxy for better health care, or when electronic whiteboards are seen as the answer to poor classroom discipline. It's just too simplistic to think that this is all about inputs. We have to think, too, about the disciplines of efficiency and effectiveness across all our public services. And in the wake of the events of August the 8th, we must focus, above all, not on what we put in, but on what we get out of it. That, I think, is the Wandsworth way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Maxwell-Scott.